Welcome to Eye on the Tigers News. I'm Justice Dan. And I'm Alexis Richer. Thanks for joining us today for the news we've been following for you. Republican presidential candidate John Kasich officially ended his bid for the White House in the address from Columbus, Ohio on Wednesday evening, a decision that all but assures Donald Trump's position as the GOP nominee. He thanked everyone who volunteered for his campaign and outlined the joys that come from campaigning for the nation's highest office. Choking up at some points, Kasich praised the many states he visited and expressed gratitude for the opportunity to meet so many supporters across the nation. Kasich followed Texas Senator Ted Cruz, who folded his campaign tent following his disappointing showing in the Indiana primary. Vermont Senator Bernie Sanders seemed rejuvenated following his upset win in Indiana over Hillary Clinton. Sanders said on Wednesday that he will continue campaigning right up until the Democratic primary, despite needing a miracle finish to accumulate enough delegates to overtake Clinton. Sipping filtered city water to show it's again drinkable, President Barack Obama promised Wednesday to ride herd on leaders at all levels of government until every drop of water flowing into homes in Flint, Michigan is safe to use. He also promised that the aging pipes that contaminated water with lead will be replaced, but cautioned that the project will take time. Obama said he wanted to use the crisis to make long-term improvements to the city, where more than 40% of residents live in poverty. Obama said he understood why people are scared and angry and feel let down. He said what happened in Flint was a man-made disaster that didn't have to happen. But he said it did happen and everyone must work together to fix it. The Northern California doctor who was asked to help Prince before his death is an addiction and pain specialist who has championed the use of semi-synthetic opiate to treat pain. Dr. Howard Cornfield, who operates in an outpatient medical center in Martin County, received publicity in San Francisco Bay Area in 2013 for his work with buprenorphine. Advocates of the drug say the opiate can help addicted patients by offering pain relief with less possibility of an overdose and addiction, unlike oxycodone or morphine. California has become the second state in the nation to raise the legal age to buy tobacco from 18 to 21 starting the clock for opponents to ask voters for a reversal this November. Governor Jerry Brown's signature on Wednesday means, beginning June 9th, it will be a crime in California to sell or give tobacco to anyone except military personnel under age 21. He did not say why he signed the measure along with four others restricting tobacco use in various ways. Today's odd news of the day comes from South Carolina where an alligator wandered through a subdivision in Monk's Corner near Charleston this week and at one point wandered onto the front porch of a house and climbed up to the front door. It appeared to be reaching for the doorbell. The Monday visit was captured on video by Gary Rogers, whose daughter Danielle Barkley lives nearby. Barkley tells local media that alligators have visited the neighborhood before and last year she saw one on the front porch of another neighbor's house. But she says this is the first time one seemed to reach for the doorbell. We're stuck in an unsettled weather pattern. What can we expect? Here's Mr. Charbonneau with the forecast. We're in the midst of a stubborn weather pattern that's been giving us a mixed bag of conditions almost hour to hour. And that's the result of a low pressure system off to our west that it, at one moment brings us clouds and showers and the next bright sunshine. We've been on the northern edge of the most persistent rainy weather, so we're looking to be more fortunate to escape with just cloudy weather and maybe just some intermittent showers for the next day or two. For the rest of today, we'll be seasonably warm. We hit 63 for the high, and tomorrow, Friday, we even hit 60 with maybe a little bit more in the way of sunshine. But again, don't be too surprised if we see a pop-up shower or two. Now for the weekend, Saturday looks like the pick day of the week. Temps will approach 70 with some filtered sunshine and clouds. Sunday, of course, is Mother's Day, and we may luck out and see some gradual improvement throughout the day. We start the morning with some rain and then maybe some sunshine to close out the weekend. But it will be cooler on Sunday with highs only in the mid-50s. Now we look ahead, all indicators show wet weather sticking around for next week. That's the forecast. I'm Michael. We hope you have a great weekend. The 
NBA playoffs are well into the second round. With a recap, here's Abby. The NBA playoffs are indeed in full swing, and so were the Cleveland Cavaliers last night. Cleveland put on the greatest shooting performance in NBA history, draining 25 three-pointers in a 123-98 win over the Atlanta Hawks, who could only watch in amazement as the Cavs rained down long-range shots from every corner of the floor in Game 2. The Cavs made 18 three-pointers in the first half, setting the mark for any half, and then broke Golden State's postseason mark of 21 three-pointer, three-pointers. With the win, the Cavs take a 2-0 lead in the series. The Miami Heat will look to extend its 1-0 lead over the Toronto Raptors when that series resumes tonight. In the Western Conference, Golden State holds a commanding 2-0 lead on Portland with Game 3 Saturday and San Antonio and Oklahoma City are tied at 1-1 with Game 3 tomorrow night. Johnny Menzel is expected to make his first courtroom appearance in Dallas after his indictment in a domestic violence case. The 23-year-old former Cleveland Browns quarterback will learn details of his release Thursday, a day after he reported to a Dallas area jail for booking and a mugshot. Police in Highland Park released the mugshot Wednesday afternoon. The Heisman Trophy winner and former Texas A&M star was indicted by a grand jury last month after his girlfriend, but after his ex-girlfriend alleged he hit her and threatened to kill her during a night out in January. Alex Rodriguez won't be around in the next two weeks to help the New York Yankees attempt to get out of last place in the AL East. Rodriguez was placed on the 15-day list Wednesday with a strained right hamstring. The injury occurred Tuesday night while Rodriguez was running out a grounder in the fifth inning of a 4-1 loss to the Orioles. He expressed hope Tuesday night that the injury wouldn't put him on the disabled list. Instead, he stuck on the DL for the seventh time in the last nine seasons. That's it for sports. I'm Abby. The calendar is starting to get pretty busy around here. For only $45, you can buy prom tickets in Mr. Charles's room. Guest forms for junior prom are now available in the assistant principal's office. Senior dinner dance tickets also went on sale this week. The dinner is on June 17th. Seniors are reminded that thank you cards for the graduation program are due tomorrow. If you have not picked up a card to fill out, stop into the main office today and get one. Sports physicals will be held this month. Sign up today. This physical will provide the student-athlete to participate in fall, winter, and spring sports for the entire 2016-17 school year. Please see Mrs. Wallace in the nurse's office for paperwork and to schedule an appointment. That's it for us today. Thanks for, thanks for being with us. We'll see you again next Tuesday. For the staff of I'm the Tigers, I'm Alexis Richer. And I'm Justice Dan. Have a great rest of your week.